Okay, so um, here we are, <clears throat> moving into the second week of January already, and um, just wanted to throw this together really quick. Uh, got this brush here, and um, <clears throat> I know I normally do stuff with uh, you know Agora, you know, and 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 Jay Nats, and <clears throat> I still do. <laughs> I do a lot of it actually. I was honing like last night until like two, three in the morning. But um, I also do brushes, and um, lather is like half your shave, you know. In my opinion, I mean, don't quote me exactly. There's no way to measure it. But um, anyway, so I got this giant brush. It's like I don't know. You know, I didn't measure it. I don't know if it's a 38 or a 40 or whatever it is, but it's a huge knot, you know. And um, I made this handle for it. Um, basically, um, you know, anybody can do this. You can do this, right? You, yes, you can do this, right? Um, this not, this brush is for me. I'm not selling this. Um, this was just like a lark because I like to have fun and shaving is fun for me. So I do stuff like this to keep it interesting. But I bought a dowel, you know, and uh, this is maple. I find maple to uh, be good for uh, shaving brushes. Anyway, I, you know, I've made a bunch and they've all worked out and no complaints and all that. But uh, you can see just a dowel. And uh, it was like this long. <laughs> I cut it, you know, so I have enough left over for another one. And I think this thing cost me like four bucks, so it's like no big deal. I got it off of uh, the internet. That, that might actually have come off of eBay. I don't know. And uh, I shaped this by eye. Um, I do almost everything by eye. I don't, I don't lay things out and draw witness lines. and. I literally just did this by eye, and um, I used a uh, Dremel with a sanding drum. Come down to here and put this notch in it first, and then I shaped this down, and you know. Um, then I finished it with uh, this stuff, it's a tongue oil finish, and I know purists are gonna be like, oh, it's not pure tongue oil. Yeah, I don't care, it works great. I have pure tongue oil, and I do use it, I just didn't feel like doing it this time. Um, it takes a lot longer for that stuff to cure and set up and this stuff goes pretty quickly and this is really like This is a test brush. I want to see if this knot sheds itself to death I want to see what it's like to put lather on my face where I cover my ear and my neck at the same time um, I, I, I you know just wanted to do it So I didn't want to go hog wild on, on the handle although it kind of came out pretty nice I made one goof here, right? You see a little divot in there. Yeah, whatever um, so what I did to make the handle, the handle was, uh, I get a Forstner bit. So, uh, these are my Forstner bits. Um, so mistakenly, I thought getting one the size of the knot or whatever, or close to it, you know, I, I bought the biggest one I could find at the time. Um, I bought this giant Forstner bit and, um, I figured, well, you know, this is like one and three quarters. So I could just like put this in here, you know, and what this does is it makes a flat bottom hole. Do not do this unless you have a drill press. Well, do not do it with a bit this big unless you have a drill press because a hand drill, it's just unmanageable and um, it wasn't working for me. So uh, until I get myself a drill press, which, you know, I live in an apartment, so that might very well be never <laughs> is going to stay uh, boxed up. But I have these that I've used on other projects. And um, so what I did was, uh, I started off with one of these, I forget, probably this one, it's like an inch, right? Wait a minute, no, this is an inch, right? And this is like uh, 24 millimeters. And I so I guess this is like closer to 22, whatever. So I started with the inch, right? And it cuts a flat bottom hole. And uh, then in typical, you know, hack work fashion, I uh, took my Dremel tool, had that flat bottom hole, and I just sanded it out. And no, it's not perfect. No, it's not, you know, uh, perfectly machined. It's not super tight tolerances, you know, but uh, it's a shaving brush, folks. It doesn't have to have the same specs and tolerances that the space shuttle has. It's just a brush, all right? So, uh, you know, having taken a bazillion old Everettis and Fullers and, you know, 
opals and whatever else uh, brushes apart, I can tell you that those brushes weren't done to scientific production levels either. Okay, they were just basically slapped together. So you don't have to slap it together, but you know, you don't have to sweat the small stuff all the time. You know, if you read posts on the internet, people talk about this stuff like they're weighing, you know, the amount of glue and the density and the shore hardness of the release. And the, yeah, you know, if you, <laughs> if, if your adhesive is like going to cure to like something over shore 40, it's probably going to be fairly permanent like this is. Uh, I use, uh, for this brush, right, I use a DEVCON 5-minute epoxy two-part. Um, what I do, right, <clears throat> you'll see it. There's a video. I'm, I'm going to put it in uh, the end of this little diatribe. Uh, I take a piece of cardboard and I put some clear packing tape on it and I mix on top of the tape. The reason for that is there's a chemical in here that will get absorbed by the cardboard. I forget the chemical name. Trust me, it's a thing. It happens. And then it throws off your curing. So I do it on top of the tape and I mix it up. Then I let it sit. It's five minute epoxy. I let it sit a couple of minutes. Prior to that, okay, I had test fit. This is a spare nut. Um, and there's no hole here, but you, you're getting what I'm telling you. You test fit, right, a million times, a bazillion times. You, if, if you're even in doubt, like a little bit, do not set the epoxy up and do not think about putting the knot in. This goes in the hole in the handle only when you are 110% sure it's sitting at the right height. Now, if you're not willing to commit like that, don't use epoxy. Go get yourself some like RTV 400, I think it is. It's food grade silicone. You can set the knot with that. It'll last a couple few years, um, maybe forever, but you know, I beat the hell out of things. So it really won't have that long a lifespan, but it really doesn't matter. It's a shaving brush. It's like you're not staking your life on this stuff. It's a brush. You whip up soap with it and you apply it to your face. The minute you start making more out of this than that, you're putting yourself in a position to worry and you don't have to worry because you know what even if you screw it up it doesn't matter like let's say the knot isn't perfectly set and it's a little angled it'll work <clears throat> you know so you just make another one and then you post the picture of the better one on your forum or whatever and Nobody has to know you screwed up, you're not. Or, you know what, but post it, who cares? You know, if someone's going to say, oh, that sucks, well, fuck him, you know? <clears throat> I'm sure he has done everything perfect all of his life. Yeah, this is a spare knot. I bought two of them. They're kind of expensive. I, I don't recommend using this. I've already test lathered this guy. You can see it's, like, bloomed out, right? Um, it, you got to use, like, like, a kilo of soap. <laughs> it's awesome. It, it's incredible, okay? Um... I always test lather. Uh, I only lost about 10 hairs and, and nothing else since then. I actually thought this was going to shed itself to death and um, that would be that. But no, no, it, it gave up a bunch of hairs and that's that. So I have another one. I'm going to make a, another brush, I think. I might sell that one. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have two of these ginormous knots. And, uh, you know, if you want to see, like, all right, here's a regular knot, right? This is what? Yeah, like 24. <laughs> right see it's like <laughs> like the plug on this is whatever so um back to the epoxy you mix the epoxy up and then you drip it into the cup part you know the bowl where, where the brush is going to go um you, you don't use too much because you don't want to push the knot down and have the glue squirt up and then it shows on the bristles you don't want that you just need enough down there to cover the bottom of your plug okay I also like to get it to come up a little bit on the side and with making brushes you can kind of figure out like how much glue that is by putting it in and then taking it out. You have to be really careful. In the video you'll see I get some on the inside wall here and, and that was like really sloppy of me because I was rushing. Um, normally what I would do is I would, I would wipe that out with a towel so I didn't um, stand a chance of having the glue creep up on the bristles into a visible spot. Even if glue creeps up, it doesn't really matter. It's a brush. It's a shaving brush. That's all. All right. My first couple of brushes, I wound up a little glue ring. I got over it. I figured it out. Um, when I started selling brushes, that I was past all of that. Um, 
but I'm not beyond screwing up now. And if I did, it would be like, yeah, whatever. I put it in my brush farm and I'd lather with it, you know? Um, so anyway, this has like a bunch of coats on it of, uh, like this tongue oil finish that I told you about. Right. So what I do is, uh, put it on with a paper towel, right. And let it soak in, put it on with a paper towel, let it soak in, put it on with a paper towel, let it soak in, keep doing that until it beads up a little bit. You can look under a loop and you can see it starting to beat up and you sand it down. I start off sanding with like a 600, right. Once it's all flattened out and matte, apply with a, uh, apply more with a paper towel. Keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it until it beads up and then do it again. I usually have to go through that like three times with maple. I have to go that uh, route three times and then I'm good to go. And then I get to this point where I just sand it off and it's kind of like, you know, a semi-gloss finish, which is what I'm looking for. I, I'm not, I, I didn't really want to go hog wild on this. If I did, I would have done something with the, with the groove in here a little bit more smooth in the transition and I would have done a little bit more on the bottom, you know, but I just needed a platform to test the knot on. And that's why this is like sort of half done, not half done. It, it's fully done. It's just not like presentation quality. It's good enough for government work, as they say. And, you know, uh, barring an accident, this will probably last me forever. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, the, the wood will split off. I'll cut it out. I'll, I'll peel off the wood or whatever. And then I'll have the knot if it's all that, you know. Um, I honestly, I think I'm probably going to use this like a dozen times and then just put it on the shelf and admire it and use it like once a year for that ridiculous. You need a bowl. You can't lathering on your face with this. Forget about it. Okay. You need a bowl and you need like a cereal bowl. I have like a four or five inch stainless bowl. It's like... I don't know. It's like this freaking big. It's like, first, the thing, the Mitchell's wool fat, okay, that ceramic thing, this almost fills up the whole hole. Okay, so then I load, then I have a bunch of soap sitting on here. Now, I don't even have enough room to make a lather. I go into the big stainless bowl, and that's barely big enough. What I really need is like my scuttle, which has ridges in the bottom, and it has like, you know, an eight inch circumference. That, that's what I, I don't like, you know, doing that. <laughs> I like the lather on my face. I just wanted to make this brush because, well, look at it. It's freaking ridiculous and it's cool and it's fun and, you know, not too many people have them and nobody has this handle. I do. This is mine. It may not be great, but it's original. And I made it from a piece of dowel, okay? <clears throat> and, and that's worth the price of admission. Anyway, I'm going to insert the... Um, the video of me gluing the knot in here and uh and i'll come back and uh maybe i'll do a lather photo maybe i'll do a little bit of lathering um and, and show you the lather that this thing makes or something like that anyway
All right, so um, here I am back at the bench. Um, I know I said I was going to show you some lathering photos, and uh, I am. Uh, they're coming. But um, that's what I'm going to close the video out with. You know, you just took a look at the um, <clears throat> the other piece where um, I showed setting the knot into place and all that other stuff. And um, hopefully that was a little explanatory. Um, so you can, like, you know, figure out a little bit about how to do it for yourself. Because, you know, making a brush is, you know, it, it, it's not all that hard. I mean, you can really refine the craft. You can. You know, there are guys that make some incredible brushes. I don't want to downplay their work. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, if you want to make a brush, you can make a brush. Anybody can make a brush. You get a handle, you get some glue, you get a knot, and you're good to go. Anyway, um, so I've been lathering this. I've been using it for a bunch of days, and I lathered it a bunch of times. And you can see it like it bloomed out really nice a little bit more, and it's, it's broken in, and it's loosened up, and it's crazy. I mean, it's just an insane knot. <laughs> it uses a ton of soap. It takes a while to lather it up because there's just so much lather there. Um, but it's a lot of fun, you know, and I enjoy that. So I'm going to use it a few more times and uh, I'm going to put it away and then I'll use it sporadically. It lost a few more hairs. Uh, it did a little bit of shedding, but nothing bad, like a couple they popped out. And, you know, I'm not sensing that there's any imminent danger. And, uh, you know, so there's that. But anyway, you know, uh, when you're setting a knot, a couple of things. You got you to gotta figure out, like, where you want to set it, what depth. I didn't really show you or talk too much about setting the depth, you know. Um, and uh, this is already glued. <laughs> so let me put that over there. Uh, here I have another knot. There's a new knot. Um, this is uh, theoretically 26, right, Black Badger? I love Black Badger. Okay, it's like my favorite. Okay. Uh, technically, they call it a pure badger, but it's got like, you know, this black thing up on top. It's not really black. It's like just dark brown. Um, it's like a two band. I, I just love them. Anyway, um, it's old as 26. It's really 25.5. You know, I, I measured it. Now, you want to fit it into a handle. So you went and you bought a handle from somebody, or maybe you got a, a brush that you restored. So here I have two handles, right? Um, uh, this is a. Uh, Vintage butterscotch uh, Catalan Bakelite thing. Um, I restored it, had a little bit of a fissure. It's not, you know, there's a little bit of a visual on it, but it's totally sound. Polished up a little bit. I'm going to drop a nice knot into this. I'm probably going to put a, a finest, two band finest in here. Um, I may sell this one. I may not. I don't know. I'm really partial to butterscotches. I may give it to my girlfriend. I, I don't know. I haven't made it yet, so figure it out as I go along. Anyway, so there's that, right? And um, I haven't enlarged the hole because I haven't got a knot for it yet. But right now, I think this is like a 22, right? Um, so I got this big one. And this I actually got from Nelson. And <laughs> uh, for a long time, I wasn't using it as a, as a brush handle. I was using it as a base for my air plant. But air plant got really big and fat, so it doesn't fit in here anymore. <laughs> so this just hangs out. Anyway, this is tapped for very possibly a 26 or a 28 or something to that effect. And this is 25.5. So I get this in and it fits, but it, it, I, I can't get it in all the way. Right? So when you buy a knot for a handle, you buy the handle first. You measure the hole. This measures 24. You think you need a 24 knot, right? Maybe, maybe not. Because the geometry of the knot is, it, it, understanding this is important. This is what it is, this dimension here. This is what they use to measure. This is your plug. This is a pile of epoxy, right? And it's usually about five millimeters or something like that, you know, in depth. But watch the tip of, of the tool. See, it comes up. You have a tuft. And the tuft is often wider than the knot, uh, than the plug. So I, I would never get this in without enlarging. I would have to buy a 24 and size it and see if I met the bottom of this. Now, uh, another thing about setting the knot, you feel the tuft, 
you have to decide. You make a bunch of brushes and you pay attention. You figure out how you want to operate for you and you listen to what other people you make brushes for tell you and then you learn what they want. I like to set my knot to the top of the tuft, right? It's up here. So that means I need, I would like that amount of depth and you're looking at about 10 millimeters. You find most of my holes are usually around 12, uh, sometimes deeper, often deeper actually, but um, most of the time it's like that. So this is something you have to consider. And the reason I want to come up a little further is because I want to increase the backbone always. I'm, I'm more of a backbone freak. So if I'm up here, you can see you're like squishing the brush in a little bit. You get less bloom and you get more stiffness. And I prefer the stiffness. I like the scrubby. I like the whatever. It works for me. All right. You may like it floppy. Yeah, that's you. All right. So if you have a handle and this isn't sitting where you want, let's just say this is too deep for you, right? Because someone made the handle and someone else made the knot and now you got them together and let's just say it's it's just too deep for you because you want it up. You, you want it to sit like way up here, but the hole is too deep. You know, you, you can get really complicated. You don't have to. You can buy a washer that fits in there. This is 26 millimeters. You can buy washers. Um, you need to put a quarter in there, you know? It doesn't have to be a perfect fit. The glue will fill in, you know? Um, smaller handles. You could use a, a penny, a nickel. You don't have to come all the way to the edge. You know, if you're using multiples, then it's better to have it be bigger. Um, one of my favorite substances for this, now this is too big actually, but I use cork. Right? This almost fits, so I would have to shave it off. And it's easy to cut this stuff. It's easy to cut this way, and it's easy to sand it down to make it fit. So I just use some natural cork, and uh, I can make a shim there. You can use anything, you know, a piece of silicone, whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> and you size it a bunch of times, and then, you know, you can glue your, your knot in, and you can get it where you want. But uh, always remember that you have to deal you got to deal with the tuft, right? It's going to be a little bigger. Most of the time, it's going to be a little bigger than your uh, actual plug. So if the plug is 24 and the brush is 24, the tuft is going to be 25. It's not going to fit. You're going to have to enlarge the hole or get a smaller knot. It, you know, it's just the way it is, right? Um, so there's that. Uh, put this back in this little house. Keep it clean. And uh, yeah, I did this too uh, while I was working with those other brushes. Uh, this is a turn back, all right? And so if you're gonna work on these, right? There's something you gotta know, they suck. <laughs> I love using them, they're awesome. This is like a new old stock one, it was totally dead mint. But the knot was falling apart. It was gonna like just explode. It was gonna just shed, 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 shed. So I had to de-knot it and you can see I did a good job here. And a lot of people like to use a uh, heat, but you gotta, with these, there's something to know. You see this? You see this curve here? When they pour the glue in, the glue becomes the size of this. And then it sets, so it's not coming out. <laughs> because this is smaller. This bevel, bezel, right? Um, is a beauty thing. They don't all have it, but most of them do. A lot of them do. So when you have these, okay, um, what I do is I cut, and then I use very, very sharp scissors and a knife, and I cut away on an angle like this in here. Pretend this is a knife. Cut, 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 cut. And then I go in with a drill, and I drill a lot of holes, you know, and then... You know, eventually you can get the pieces out. Um, it's dicey. Um, you may lose it. You, you may drill through. You may have an accident. You have to be really careful. Um, you don't necessarily want to drill straight down like with a drill press. I, I like to go on an angle to uh, really do damage to the plug to get it to crumble to fall apart. Once I get that, then it's easy to get out. But then you have some scraping to do to get in there. So I have a, a cold chisel that uh, I put a really... I would never chisel with this edge because it's not 
it's not blunt enough to stand up to like real cold chisel work, but for this type of thing, it gets in there and you can like really just snap stuff out. Anyway, it's gotta be good and sturdy because that old glue is old glue, but it's really tough. Anyway, so that's that guy. He's gonna get a, uh, a nice knot too. I just don't know what, it has some knots coming. But anyway, so back to this, all right. Um, I'm going to close out this video with some pictures of some lather. It's nothing great. It's just three pics I took when, like, I was shaving during the week. And uh, just to show you that you can use it. <laughs> and um, if you want to have fun, you know, um, this is one way to have fun with uh, shaving that doesn't involve honing and razors. You know, double-edged guys um, and straight users, we, we all use these brushes. So it's, like, common ground for us. And... Um, it's something that uh, you can, you know, put some effort and thought into it and uh, really roll with it. You can like, you know, have a lot of fun. Anyway, that's what it's all about, having some fun. So get yourself a gigantic knot. Hello. And um, <laughs> no, I don't suggest this. This is crazy. Nobody needs this. It's fun. But, you know, get yourself like one of these guys. You can get them on eBay. You can get them. Actually, this came from uh, the Golden Nib. Um I think the guy's name is Tony. I'm not sure. Anyway, the guy who runs the Golden Nib, TGN, we call it. He's he's like a stand-up guy. He's been around. He's really been a part of the shaving community in this aspect. I think he does uh, handles and pens and stuff. And, um, you, you know, he's he, he sells a good quality knot, and he stands by his product. You know, I've bought a ton of knots from this guy. I had one that was bad. It wasn't bad. It shed itself really bad. I, I contacted him and it was like, no bullshit, no bullshit with the guy at all. He's like, Keith, do me a favor, check it for a month. If it's still shedding in a month, I'll send you a new knot. And it was shedding in a month. And he sent me a new knot and it was like, no, no, no big deal. You know, you, you can't, you can't buy that type of reliability. Well, you know, <clears throat> I guess you can, but uh, yeah, I think you know what I mean. It's like one of those things. He's a stand up guy. So, um, I'm not getting paid to endorse him or anything. I just, you know, he's, I've been using him to buy knots from for a long time. And uh, I know there are other places to buy knots, but I routinely go back to him because I like his service. I like his selection. Um, and I believe that he stands behind his product. And I, I appreciate that with, in this world, you know, somebody recently said, Hey, you know, I got the stone over here. It's a good price. I can get a better price and you, you know, you should check it out. It's a better price. Yeah. But that person selling that, I don't know. I don't know what his morals are. I don't know what his background is. I, I don't know him from the shaving community. I, I want to support the guys that have been putting it on the line for us, you know, and if it costs me a dollar or two more or whatever, for whatever I'm buying, it's okay because, you know, um, they've been there and they've helped me out. You know, the bottom line people buying stuff, uh, you know, in lots or selling counterfeits or, you know, don't offer uh, any type of help or assistance on things. I, I stay away from that. You know, um, and that's just for me, you know, that's what I'm, I'm saying here. Uh, so yeah, I got this one from the golden, Nib, but I don't buy everything from him. This one didn't come from him, but I bought other stuff from him. So, uh, you know, I shop around, but, uh, yeah, it's a good knot, uh, pure, pure, pure badger. He has it in best. I actually prefer pure. Um, again, pure is very much like black badger, but black badger is totally different than this. It's completely, they're both pure, but black is way different than this. This is actually really like luxurious compared to black badger. This is a little, like a little down and dirty and rugged. That's what I like about it. It's a little body. It's got like this really intense musk. It flushes out, it washes out easily, but it's just sort of like, it's like rugged, you know, this is like a, a black badger. It's like a rugged knot and I love them. This is a little more, you know, refined. Um, a lot of people go for uh, silver tips and I, I think they're too floppy. They're too poofy for me. I feel like, I don't know, it's like a makeup brush or something, but that's me, right? I'm not saying your brush is no good. I'm just saying I prefer this kind. Anyway, so that's it. Look, get out there, make some brushes. If, look, if in the comments, if you want me to do a video showing start to finish, like, you know, um, I don't have one out on the, on the desk, <laughs> you know, getting a, a vintage brush and, and how to go through the steps like I do with a razor to, uh, uh, to re-knot and restore and refurbish a brush, um, yeah, let, let me know. I'll consider doing it. I, I think this video covers everything, but um, maybe not. Maybe maybe there's some stuff that I missed that you want to see. So don't don't be afraid. Mention that. All right. So listen. Take care. Have fun. Talk to you soon. I got a honing video coming. 
And um, anyway, we we'll check out the leather shots that are about to pop up. They're kind of interesting. All right, talk to you soon.